Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. This is going to be my next Avatar fan commentary track and this one is going to be for Book 2 Earth Episode 20, Crossroads of Destiny. So the finale episode for Book 2 Earth. This is the one that lost the poll that I put up between uh, it and uh, Avatar and the Fire Lord. Uh, it was about 60-40% in favour of Avatar and the Fire Lord, which I was sort of happy to see. Uh, that is an episode I do prefer to this one, but I still rate uh, Crossroads of Destiny very, very highly. So, uh, to sync up your copy of the episode with my commentary track, obviously have your episode ready to go. Uh, and basically there'll be a pause when I finish this intro and when I start speaking again. You hit play, I'll hit play, we should be synced up. Uh, one extra little thing just to keep us um, on sync basically with this is that I am going off the Blu-ray version of this episode and the way they do some of these kind of pseudo two-part episodes like the book two finale is that they don't specifically specify them as being kind of two individual episodes so it just flows directly from the guru into uh, Crossroads of Destiny so uh, where my copy of this episode starts is with the title screen so we don't get the sort of you know typical avatars you know going through the four avatars and um, type thing the usual intro it's pretty much just uh, white screen crossroads with destiny and it fades directly into the episode so be aware of that and sort of have your episode ready to go including um starting at that point basically just as the title card comes in and we should be synced up at that point so yeah there's gonna be a pause now and when i start speaking again hit you hit play and i will hit play and we should be synced up Okay, so here we are with uh, 220, Crossroads of Destiny, an episode I do rate quite highly. It's in my top tier. I think it's my 14th rated episode of Avatar. So I do rate a bunch of episodes above this, but it's it's still quite high. Uh, there are book two episodes that I do find better than this. I think The Guru is a better episode. I have Blind Bandit's better. And I think Zuko alone is like the one directly above this. So yeah, there are definitely a lot of uh, very good book two episodes, including this one. A lot happens, this is a very eventful finale, despite being sort of just the one episode. But the Guru and this are basically a two-parter, they just don't really, tr they don't have the technical part one, part two, but it, it basically is. And yeah, Azula makes great use of the Dai Li here, and will so, like right up until more or less she banishes them all, in a very, a, a big mistake moment in the finale basically. But again, this is one of those commanding Azula moments, you know, controlling people through fear and just pure, you know, confidence and the, that, that charisma that she does have. And the big thing is, will they be loyal to her or will they be loyal to Long Feng when the time comes? Like we saw this obviously in a 201 um, when she was basically properly introduced and it's just another, just another example of it. But yeah, everything's going well for Zuko and Iroh. Zuko finally seems like he's made a big move. Like, he doesn't seem focused on capturing Aang. He seems like he might be okay and open to the idea of just maybe just settling down in Bossing Say here. Accepting their lives as refugees and that, you know, going back to be the prince, do what his father wants, isn't maybe something he needs to do anymore. But the second he sees Azula, it changes. And yeah, this is the thing with Aang here at this point, dealing with the fact that he hasn't unlocked that final chakra, and it relates to his greatest flaw, which is his attachment. And, and that's kind of fun in, in the sense that the last Avatar commentary I did with this desert, where we really saw this played up quite heavily with how Aang was when Appa was taken, and now we're seeing how, what he's going to do to when something's happening to Katara. And yeah, immediately things change for Zuko the second he sees her. And yeah, it, it makes sense. Azula would be all for the Dai Li in terms of uh, a group that she has. And it shows how she completely underestimates Iroh. She does not view him as being one of the most powerful firebenders. Whereas we as the audience and Zuko absolutely do. 
So he constantly is able to take her by surprise. And in many ways, that's Iroh's thing, that because he is this sort of like, you know, fat old man, so many characters don't expect much from him, even though he's one of the best. You know, just lightning there to blow up into the wall. He escapes, but Zuko is going to stay and try to fight. Highlighting, you know, he's going to make some bad choices in this episode. This is him going back to the way things were. A plan that is completely not thought out. Thinking he can challenge Azula to an Agni Kai, she'd agree. But she just uses the, the numbers advantage here with the Dial E and just completely, you know, captures him here. It's a powerful attack here from Zuko, but in a corridor with Earth all around with the Dai Li, so many, it was never going to work in his favor. And yeah, here we have King Quay and Bosco. And at this point, you know, it's not really fully going down just yet, but it's about to kick off. Like, it all happens very quickly once it gets going. Kind of highlighting how weak the leadership of the Earth Kingdom is and in the fact that like just infiltrating in this way and taking over effectively just one faction with the Dai Li is enough to pretty much you know bring the whole city under her control. But yeah, here's the setup for an interesting scene. The Zutara's, uh, the Zutara fans favorite scene apparently. Like I, I struggle with you know the idea of like in any way viewing this as a romantic scene. Not just because I don't really get Zutara but just because the scene itself I think treating it as being romantic in any way I think is like weird because it's not that sort of scene at all yes it is positive towards the just general relationship between Katara and Zuko because it's been completely negative like she just views him as a villain up until this scene but trying to extend it beyond that I think is a bit much but yeah as Katara has to deal with someone she unexpected team avatar also do and of course, you get the dynamic here of Sokka and Aang just view Iroh as like, oh, you're with Zuko, so you're kind of our enemy, even though you haven't done much to us. But Toph didn't experience any of that. She has just met Iroh that one time a few episodes ago. And um, so there's that complete contrast of like, she doesn't see this guy as being like any sort of a villain. And yeah, they're going to have to work together to get Zuko and Katara back. And yeah, like, Iroh gets it. And a great line from Sokka here. Remind me when it's on the outside. And yeah, Iroh kind of surprising everyone here with the fact that, like, oh yeah, I captured the Dai Li agent. Like, they know he can bend, but, like, this level... And yeah, here's where everyone is pretty much caught up. And it's too quick to stop this. And yeah, this is a great scene as well. Long Fang still has some loyalty here, even though he's technically in prison. But you can see that they like her as a leader. They can respect what she brings to that role. Terrifying and inspiring. And there's a bit of worry there for Long Fang, who's a very solid sort of mid-range villain. And yeah, this is it, this is mainly a rant from Katara towards Zuko. Zuko doesn't say much in this exchange. And I think that's the thing with this scene, is that like while it leads to a kind of moment of like, oh, she's willing to help him with the scar, um, it is just this st- door slightly opening to her viewing him in a different way and that's really I think all there really is to it and I think trying to view this as romantic takes away from the eventual amazing moment in the Southern Raiders where she does forgive him and they become friends but it is a great line here I'm sorry that's something we have in common what happened to Zuko's mother and of course, like, I, I have seen people actually argue that, like, oh, well, well, Z- well Zuko and Katara have a, a greater connection because they both share the idea that their, their mothers were taken from them. And it's like, uh, 
the same happened to Aang. Like, I know Aang doesn't technically know his mother, but his mother is dead because of the Arnhem genocide. Technically. And then, even if you view it as like, oh, well, he didn't know his parent. Like, his father figure, Gyatso, was also, you know, killed as well by the Fire Nation. Plus, Ursa is actually alive. And yeah... I'm getting some advice from Iroh. This is a great kind of turn of things of just having different the, the groups be sort of split up between each other. And yeah, he explains the full chakra thing with the guru. And Iroh can understand the decision that he made. He obviously doesn't know the full spe spe specifics when it comes to like the avatar state and how it's affected. But there's an understanding behind that decision. Yeah, and like, it, it's, it's a situation here where Iroh can't offer Aang exactly what he needs, but it's just nice that you do get it, and I, th I think that's why it's, it's such a nice scene. Like, obviously, like, Aang's mistake is ultimately that he probably takes the guru a little too literally. It's, the chakras are not 100% or 0%, they're not on or off. When the Earth Chakra talks about dealing with, um, you know, survival being blocked by fear. When you unlock the Earth Chakra, it doesn't mean that you will never experience fear again. Or that fear doesn't affect you in any way. It just means that you will not let fear control your actions. And let that be the defining thing about you. That's the point here. And you now have to apply that to attachments. That is Aang's major flaw as a character, which we know of from the desert, which was the last Avatar commentary I did showed it very very well with Appa we know Aang cares deeply about the people he cares about that's why he's come here for Katara and um, so it's all about can Aang figure out the thing with attachments enough to balance still caring but being able to realize when there are situations where he needs to put being the avatar ahead of that stuff which he ultimately does in a very great scene which we will get to yeah, and this is great here because you can tell Toph's kind of just about to go off here until Azula threatens the king. And it's fun that like t you see Tylee dressed up as a Kyoshi warrior here and then she becomes a Kyoshi warrior at the end of the series. So it's it's nice to see her like this. and It sets up the, the joke at the end of like, oh, it's Tylee undercover again. And it's like, no, she's actually part, part of the group now. And yeah. You get the sense, like, if Toph was in the catacomb ba battle at the end, this could have gone very differently, I think. that That's the impression I get. Like, her involved in that big fight right at the end, alongside Aang and everyone, different story completely. Because you see how strong she is in the invasion battle, when she also faces some Dai Li. So they take out one of the big powerhouses here. And yeah, Long Fang has been defeated, without really getting to join the game here. They are more loyal to Azula than they are to him. And this is a fantastic line from Azula. Very defining of her approach. And especially looking at her where she is in the comics right now. This is ultimately where her development needs to be. Not dealing with every single person in this way. Viewing them in that way. Understanding that there's more to life than just controlling people and manipulating people. And yeah, Long Fang realizes he's lost. And then what a great comeback. You were never even a player. But yeah, here's the scene. I, I think that is an important line of just that like Zuko is defining of the Fire Nation to Katara. When we as the audience know that it is more Ozai and sort of the military and that Zuko also has his problems and is beginning to understand them but she's mainly seen Zuko when it comes to Fire Nation stuff because she doesn't know what his journey is really about she just sees him coming after them and she offers you know to potentially heal the scar and this is why, you know, Katara ends up hating Zuko so much when we get to Zuko eventually joining the team, is because she was this close to using that spirit water on Zuko right here, prior to him just, you know, um, 
uh, prior to his betrayal, basically. And if she had, and he still betrayed them, you get the impression of like what might have happened. Like that would have been Ang gone for good. Like, th- and that's another element in all of this of like why it is so such a incredible betrayal because it it ultimately affects Katara like the most of like Team Avatar basically because she opened up to him a little bit. And yeah, here we go. Big talk here. This is time for the final decision. And this is just a nice one. Katara is now aware that Zuko is this very sort of conflicted character. That he has his issues with the Fire Nation as well. He's not just this... He's not just the prince, basically. And you can't view him in the same way as Ozai. And Iroh finally gives him the clearest suggestion yet of just, this is the decision you need to make. He's being very direct here. And just before Zuko can even think about it, Azula enters the, the frame. And this is a whole idea of the two characters on Zuko's shoulders, both you know taking him in different directions. And she's, she gets to talk, but Iroh doesn't really, and that's what happens here. She again brings up the idea of, like, you can be redeemed in your father's eyes. On her back, you know, the H word. (laughs) And what does he want? That's the big thing. And this is it. This is the crossroads. What decision does he make? And yeah, this is the situation we have. Ang and Katara left to fight basically on their own here. And this is a great great fight for Katara here. Because we see like she, she gets the advantage over Azula here. And we've seen a few times that Katara is able to do that. Katara is one of the few benders that um, Azula really sort of struggles in a way against. It's kind of fitting in a way then that that Katara is ultimately the one to sort of defeat Azula. So two on one, Azula knows that she's up against it here. And here we go. What this choice has Zuko made? Does he attack his sister or does he attack Aang? And he chooses to attack Aang. He goes back to his old ways. The betrayal has happened. It's now two on two. They had the advantage here. They could have changed things, Aang and Katara. But Zuko has turned the tides. And yeah, here it is. Toph getting to show off her new metal bending to everyone else. And yeah, there's some great choreography here. I love that, like, you know, sudden movement stop. Air projection of yourself. Just classic, you know, air versus fire, that little section there. But yeah, Zuko doing some more advanced maneuvers. I think the thing with Aang in this fight is you can tell he's sort of conflicted about, like, trying to balance the elements that he has. He probably overuses Earth here when it's his newest element, and he should focus more on maybe the water and air, especially the air since it's his home element. And that's one of the main things with regards to his, like, mastery level as the Avatar he has to adapt to, of, like, utilizing all four elements in combination and uh, the order in which he uses them. You understand why he focuses on Earth here, because it's sort of new, it's what he's been training in a lot, but he is also the newest at it. And he can still do very powerful moves, of course. It's just, if he defended against some of this firebending with his airbending instead of Earth, he could have had an advantage. And you can see here... They've been, the way they've uh, written this fight, Katara has the advantage over Azula one-on-one, completely. And it's Zuko who gets in the way of that. And yeah, and then here we go, we have the two of them fighting. An amazing sign of their romance, of course. And then yeah. Aang versus Azula. 
And this is where he, I think, maybe miscalculates here. He's kind of new to bending this crystal stuff. Does he know how strong it is? And yeah. Whereas, you know, if he'd done airbender tactics there, he probably could have evaded that or, you know, blown it away or something like that. Very awkward position for Ty Lee there. <laughs> and yeah, the second Toph walks in with just the two of them there, it's like, yeah, we're not bothering to fight you, Toph. And yeah, and you can see Katara defending against the two of them, it's very, very impressive, but it's a bit too much. But yeah, big earth bending. But yeah, you can see the thing is Aang, it's like he's really charging in with the earth bending, And he kind of gets, you know, uh, too focused on using it that way. You know, if there's water right there, like, use water. It, it, Azula seems to struggle with water benders in a way. And here's the big moment. Katara is a master, but against this many Dai Li agents, there's like, what, 12 or something like that over there right next to her? Does Aang go over to help Katara in this moment and potentially risk what's going to happen here? Save the person he loves? Or does he focus purely on the Avatar state, which is the only way to, I think, truly get them out of this situation? Actually win the fight and save the Earth Kingdom? And so he decides to, in this moment, make the right prioritization. And that's putting the Avatar state and using that as the Avatar to win this fight over purely protecting Katara. Even if it would lead to potentially Katara getting injured while he's getting ready. And here we go. I'm about to go into the Avatar state. He never properly goes into the Avatar state because he's still... You don't see him actually do any bending. He's just about to, you know, get going. And boom. Hit with lightning. And he is actually killed in this moment. And that's... A huge reveal that they they explained to us in book three of just like I was gone that he, for the the minute or so here Ang is actually dead and the spirit water brings him back to life and that's why the offer from Katara to Zuko is such a significant moment in this episode in terms of really highlighting that betrayal but yeah emotions making water bending stronger that's why Katara was able to do such a power move that like took the advantage and then here we go Iroh stepping in, making his decision, fighting against Zuko, like they don't properly fight, but you know, some cool power moves from Iroh there, just to defend them as they get out. Again, very cool moves from Katara there, and he just, no point in fighting when he knows it's, he's up against so many, and yeah, he looks away. And yeah, we end book two on a very negative note. The team has been defeated. The Earth Kingdom has fallen. Season two ends on a very down note after season one ended on a very positive note. The victory at the north. Here is the failure of like the last big city defending the world, Bossing Se. But yeah, light comes back. Aang is alive. But of course, he has a lot to deal with in the interim. That's where this is when, like, Escape from the Spirit World happens, the story, the, the bridge from the comics happens, and so on. Going home again for, like, Zuko happens at this point from the Lost Adventures as well. In that, like, he's going to meet Mei again, which is a very important thing. The one main positive, ultimately, he could take out of his time now going to back to the Fire Nation. And yeah, all the worries come back. He's made the decision, but, like, well, will it work out now? And again, she's saying all the right things to him, but like he, he doesn't quite agree until he sees what Oza has to say to him. But you can tell that him betraying Iroh has had such a huge effect on him. And yeah, Earth Kingdom has fallen. Aang, injured, just resurrected basically there in front of us. Um, very strong finale. Like, excellent episode. Um, just... It, it's one of those things where, like, the, just the, the top, like, 15, 20 episodes of Avatar, there's, like, very little to complain about with any of them. And this is part of that uh, 
group and like I can actually I, I can absolutely understand why anyone rates this one as being one of their favorite if not their absolute favorite episode it does come down to personal preference for that last kind of batch of episodes at the top um obviously I tend to lean towards stuff like you know the southern raiders the desert um like the book one finale as being you know, slightly more in terms of what I want out of avatar but you know there's this great stuff in this with you know really getting to see iro iro getting to meet a lot of the other characters some great fights some the pacing is is quite well done here as well just in the amount that happens and then yeah the title very much referring to zuko and his decision making and you thought after the earth king episode um that he would make the right decision here um but he still more or less chooses to like read more into what Azula has to say he can't let go of the idea that he could get back in his father's good books if he captures the avatar if he sides with Azula here but immediately afterwards you you can tell he he's immediately questioning it that this is going to be the struggle for him to deal with the fact that he's now betrayed his, his uncle his uncle right in front of him showed the side he was on by defending Katara and Aang's exit and that's that's such a great moment uh, for sure um but yeah the, there's there's so much that happens here like the azula long feng scene is is great in terms of just perfectly highlighting azula but i also do like that ultimately if azula didn't get zuko to turn she would have lost that i think you know iro arriving on the scene Zuko on their side as well and then Aang and Katara the four of them would have been able to handle Azula and all those daily agents um and especially if like if enough time had passed and like maybe Toph had been able to come on the scene as well like you you can definitely get the impression that like if not for some of the timing of stuff that happened here and Zuko's decision Azula like she didn't have full control over that situation she very much had to rely on the manipulation of Zuko here and really targeting him here because he really did turn the tides because she struggled one-on-one -on -one versus Katara and you know if it was you know two you know two on one of course she was going to struggle with that so she needed someone else and the daily weren't ultimately enough and um, so you know just very very strong episode so they're my thoughts on uh, 220 Crossroads of Destiny I continue to uh, suggest uh, further episodes for me to review here. I do have an ongoing list of the episodes that you guys have chosen that I haven't done yet, so I'm going through that still as well. But yeah, give me your, your, your thoughts on this episode in the comments below. But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.